Now, what would happen if we would not have one of those windings, but actually two of them? Each of those two would generate their own magnetic field, represented here for the one winding and represented here for the other winding. As you can see from this slide here, the field would be more and more intense the closer you are actually to the windings and would get weaker and weaker the further you're away from the windings. An AC voltage V1 across the terminals of one of the windings would generate an AC current through those windings of a current I1 as a function of time versus the voltage V2 across the other winding would generate its own current through the other windings called I2 here. Both of them would end up having their corresponding magnetic fields, H1 and H2, represented by those matrices here. As soon as those two come closer to each other, the magnetic fields going through here and going through there, which start to interfere with each other and couple through both of them, represented by the common magnetic field lines from the red wire here. Some other parts of the field might still stay individual and not couple through the other windings, and the magnetic field lines return only across one of the windings. Like in this case, for these windings here, and in that case, for the other windings. Therefore, the magnetic field of one starts to influence the electrical parameters like the currents and the voltages in the other. Now, if we use this one as the source connected to a voltage source here, we have four windings on that one. So connecting that one to a four volt AC source means we have one volt per turn across that one. And we have a look at the mutual field between those two, the one where it's coupling. And we have twice as much windings on the other one. That is eight windings on that one here. Then we end up getting eight volts across the terminals out here on this one as the common magnetic flux dictates that the voltage per turn stays the same for all the windings that are sharing a common flux. In textbooks and also on the slide and in this example, the windings are very often drawn like that and the magnetic field is in between. Practically, you want a very good coupling on a transformer or a coupled inductor and you put those windings straight on top of each other you wind into a leaf, you put them into each other, or you first wind the first one and put the other one right on top of it. But for the sake of explaining Faraday's law for coupled inductors, it is more illustrative to draw one of the windings, which was the white cable, one of the white cables on one side going around the magnetic core which is represented by the gray ring on this slide here and drawing the other windings on the other side. Now on the slides, we have, a, we have three windings on each side with the cables. I tried to show you an example where there were four turns on one winding and eight turns on the other winding. Analytically, this means that the voltage per turn is constant for coupled inductors. Furthermore, Ampere's law says that the sum of the number of turns times the currents running through those turns for all the turns around one magnetic field is equal to the magnetic flux divided by the AUL value on the other side of this equation. Very often there is no externally applied magnetic flux, which could be coming from an AC voltage source. And then the summation of all the turns times their respective currents needs to be zero. 
going back to our cables, the one with the four windings, which has four volts across it, so one volt per turn, could, for example, result into two amps running through the whole thing. So all the way around here, we have two amps. And coupled over to the other side, where we have twice as much windings, we've got eight windings here, we have one amp flowing through that secondary side of the inductor. That means two amps from this one times the four turns plus the one amp times the eight turns needs to be equivalent to all the magnetic flux that is externally applied here. And if that one is our only source here and we expressed it already as a current times the turns means that the four turns times the two amps need to be equivalent to eight times the one amp here. So they must flow in the opposite direction so that the sum on the slide gets zero. To allow for a positive and a negative notation of the currents, in that case, we need to be able to define the start of the windings, which we can do freely once for the whole coupled inductor. So we can say that we start winding here, which is defined as the start. And in the electrical symbol, you would add that dot to express the start of the winding. So winding around like this means that this is the start of the winding and we end up down here as the end of the winding. That also defines the sign of the magnetical field going through all those turns. Now, having defined the direction of the positive turns, the start of the windings from our first windings here, the second one needs to follow the same convention. If we go positively around that way, it means that our second winding also needs to be wound around in the same way. And we cannot define the other terminal as positive and go the other way around. Note that you can flip the inductor and then both of the starts of the windings would be on top, but the direction the inductors are wound is still the exact same. Now for the electrical symbol, we indicate whether the second inductor is wound exactly the same way or the opposite way as is represented here by the red or the blue dot. Typically, these dots are all black, but it's either the red one or the blue one, which is drawn in a symbol. Now that leads to the transformer equations for those two windings. The voltage across the terminal for the one is equal the inductance times the derivative of the current coming from its own magnetical field plus or minus, depending on how they are coupled, the influence from the mutual inductance, the common inductance between the two of them, and the derivative of the current from the second winding. Similarly, for the voltage across the terminal of the second winding, so the terminals, the ends of this wire here, it is the inductance of its own windings times the derivative of the current flowing in that winding plus or minus, depending which direction the second one is wound with respect to the winding directions of the first winding, the mutual inductance, so the common magnetic field, which goes through both of them, times the time derivative of the current from the original one. That were the transformer equations in the time domain. And as we have learned from the inductors, the time derivative in the time domain can be expressed as the multiplication with J times omega in the phasor domain. So equation 31 is expressing exactly the same as equation 30 just in the phaser domain.
the equivalent T model network of a transformer is shown down here. The impedance you would see from the left hand side is L1 minus M. And for deriving that impedance, you would leave the secondary side open. So you have L1 minus M plus M means that the impedance you are looking into from here is equals to L1 and vice versa. From here, voltage two divided by current two, if the primary side is open, would see the inductance L2. The coupling of both sides is indicated by the mutual inductance M. Despite the T network model of a transformer, there are also other ways of describing the same physical phenomena in other electrical circuits. Now that you have learned about coupled inductors, it's your time to describe the transformer equations, the IV relationships between a specific coupled inductor. With the inductance L1 being 10 millihenry, inductance L2 being 5 millihenry, and the mutual inductance being 7 millihenry. And when you apply a voltage from a source, so therefore the index S, the voltage source of 200 volts times the sinusoidal of 100 times T, what is the voltage on the secondary side when the secondary side so the terminals for VT here and there are left open. And one more exercise for a symmetrical transformer with the inductance from both sides being 6 millihenry and the mutual inductance being 4 millihenry. What is the input voltage if the current through the primary winding is the sinusoidal waveform here and the inductor is connected from the primary side to the secondary side in this way here and from the secondary side back to the primary side to the lower potential of the input voltage.